Question 1. What are the four unities required for joint tenancy in California? A. Interest, time, title, possession. B. Interest, time, possession, exclusivity. C. Time, title, possession, exclusivity. D. Interest, title, exclusivity, condition. Answer. A. Interest, time, title, possession. Explanation. For joint tenancy in California, the four unities required are unity of interest, unity of time, unity of title, and unity of possession. This means all joint tenants must have an equal share, acquire the interests at the same time, through the same document, and have equal rights to the whole property. Question 2. Define the term encumbrance in real estate. A. A right or interest in a property reducing its value. B. A financial obligation tied to the property. C. A restriction on the use of the property. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. An encumbrance in real estate refers to any claim, lien, charge, or liability attached to and binding on real property that may lessen its value or obstruct the use of the property. This can include financial obligations like mortgages, as well as easements or restrictions. Question 3. What does title vesting mean in California real estate transactions? A. Transfer of property ownership. B. Legal process to clear a title. C. Method in which title is held by property owners. D. Registration of property title with the state. Answer. C. Method in which title is held by property owners. Explanation. Title vesting in California real estate refers to the method in which ownership of the property is held. It determines how the title is held by the property owners, whether it be as joint tenants, tenants in common, community property, etc. Question 4. Explain the difference between taxable value and assessed value of a property. A. Taxable value is the price the property can be sold for, while assessed value is for tax purposes. B. Taxable value is set by the tax authority, while assessed value is determined by a public appraisal. C. Taxable value includes exemptions and reliefs, while assessed value is the raw appraisal value. D. Taxable value and assessed value are the same in real estate. Answer. C. Taxable value includes exemptions and reliefs, while assessed value is the raw appraisal value. Explanation. The assessed value of a property is the dollar value assigned to a property to measure applicable taxes, determined by a public tax assessor. The taxable value is the assessed value minus any tax reliefs or exemptions applicable. Question 5. What is the primary purpose of the Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, RESPA? A. To ensure buyers and sellers have knowledge of all settlement costs. B. To regulate the real estate industry. C. To provide a framework for real estate licensing. D. To control the interest rates on mortgages. Answer. A. To ensure buyers and sellers have knowledge of all settlement costs. Explanation. The primary purpose of the Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, RESPA, is to ensure that buyers and sellers in the real estate market are provided with detailed information about all costs associated with the settlement process of a real estate transaction. Question 6. Describe the concept of agency in real estate and the duties it entails. A. The legal relationship between a principal and an agent. B. The process of buying and selling real estate. C. The regulatory body governing real estate agents. D. The contract between a seller and a buyer. Answer. A. The legal relationship between a principal and an agent. Explanation. Agency in real estate refers to the legal relationship established between a principal, such as a buyer or seller, and an agent, such as a real estate broker or salesperson, where the agent represents the principal in transactions. This relationship entails duties like loyalty, disclosure, confidentiality, and care. Question 7. What are the legal implications of breaching a fiduciary duty in a real estate transaction? A. 
possible revocation of real estate license. B. Legal action for breach of contract. C. Financial compensation to the affected party. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Breaching of fiduciary duty in a real estate transaction can lead to several legal implications, including the revocation of the agent's real estate license, legal action for breach of contract, and financial compensation to the party harmed by the breach. Question 8. Explain the difference between a general line and a specific line. A. A general line is against all properties, while a specific line is against one property. B. A general line is short-term, while a specific line is long-term. C. A general line is government-related, while a specific line is private. D. A general line is for personal property, while a specific line is for real estate. Answer. A. A general line is against all properties, while a specific line is against one property. Explanation. A general line is a legal claim against all the properties of a debtor, for example, due to unpaid taxes, whereas a specific line is against a particular property only, for example, a mortgage on a specific house. Question 9. Define redlining and its impact on real estate practices. A. The division of areas for specific real estate purposes. B. The illegal practice of denying services based on location. C. Marking properties for demolition or renovation. D. Zoning areas for commercial use only. Answer. B. The illegal practice of denying services based on location. Explanation. Redlining is the discriminatory practice where services, like mortgages or insurance, are denied or made more expensive for residents of certain areas based on racial or ethnic composition rather than economic criteria. Question 10. What is the significance of a contingency clause in a real estate contract? A. It specifies the legal fees involved in the transaction. B. It outlines the obligations of the real estate agent. C. It sets conditions that must be met for the contract to be binding. D. It determines the commission rate for the sale. Answer. C. It sets conditions that must be met for the contract to be binding. Explanation. A contingency clause in a real estate contract specifies conditions that must be fulfilled for the contract to be legally binding. Common examples include home inspections, financing, and the sale of a current home. Question 11. Scenario. A seller accepts a buyer's offer contingent on the sale of the buyer's current home. What type of contingency is this? A. Financing contingency. B. Sale contingency. C. Inspection Contingency D. Appraisal Contingency Answer. B. Sale Contingency Explanation. This is a sale contingency, where the buyer's ability to purchase the property is contingent upon them selling their current home. This type of contingency allows the buyer to avoid owning two properties simultaneously. Question 12. What is blockbusting, and why is it illegal in real estate practice? A. Selling blocks of properties at a discount. B. The process of buying up properties to create a monopoly. C. Persuading owners to sell property cheaply by instilling fear of neighborhood decline. D. Dividing large properties into smaller blocks for resale. Answer. C. Persuading owners to sell property cheaply by instilling fear of neighborhood decline. Explanation. Blockbusting is an illegal practice in real estate where agents or others persuade homeowners to sell their properties cheaply by instilling fear that the neighborhood is declining, often due to racial or ethnic changes, and then profit by reselling at higher prices. Question 13. How does California's Proposition 13 affect property taxes? A. It limits the annual increase in property taxes. B. It increases property taxes annually. C. It eliminates property taxes for senior citizens. D. It imposes an additional tax on luxury properties. Answer. A. It limits the annual increase in property taxes. Explanation. 
California's Proposition 13, passed in 1978, limits the annual increase in property taxes to no more than 2% unless the property is sold or new construction is completed. This proposition significantly impacted how property taxes are calculated in California. Question 14. Explain the right of first refusal in a lease agreement. A. The tenant's right to extend the lease before others. B. The landlord's right to terminate the lease early. C. The tenant's right to purchase the property before it is offered to others. D. The landlord's right to increase rent before renewing the lease. Answer. C. The tenant's right to purchase the property before it is offered to others. Explanation. The right of first refusal in a lease agreement gives the tenant the right to purchase the property at the same terms offered by or to a third party before the property is sold to that third party. This clause can be particularly important in commercial leases. Question 15. Describe the process of escrow in California real estate transactions. A. A legal arrangement where a third party holds funds until conditions are met. B. The period between the signing of the contract and the closing of the sale. C. The process of transferring property title from seller to buyer. D. A government regulated account for holding property taxes and insurance. Answer A. A legal arrangement where a third party holds funds until conditions are met. Explanation In California real estate transactions, Escrow refers to a legal arrangement in which a neutral third party, the escrow agent, temporarily holds funds, documents, and other assets until specific conditions of the transaction are met, such as the completion of a property inspection or securing financing. Question 16. What does due diligence entail for a buyer in a real estate transaction? A. Paying the required deposit on time. B. Ensuring all contractual obligations are fulfilled. C. Conducting thorough investigations into the property and transaction. D. Obtaining pre-approval for a mortgage. Answer. C. Conducting thorough investigations into the property and transaction. Explanation. Due diligence for a buyer in a real estate transaction involves conducting comprehensive investigations and research into the property, including reviewing documents, conducting inspections, and ensuring legal and regulatory compliance before finalizing the purchase. Question 17. Define the term amortization in the context of a mortgage. A. The process of increasing mortgage payments over time. B. The division of a mortgage into equal payments over a set period. C. The calculation of property taxes based on mortgage amount. D the interest rate adjustment in an adjustable rate mortgage. Answer, B, the division of a mortgage into equal payments over a set period. Explanation, amortization in the context of a mortgage refers to the process of dividing the mortgage loan into equal payments spread over a specific period. These payments typically include both principal and interest, gradually reducing the outstanding balance over the loan term. Question 18, what is a 1031 exchange, and how is it used in California real estate? A. A method of exchanging similar properties to defer capital gains taxes. B. A process for converting rental properties into commercial use. C. A technique for refinancing a property to reduce interest rates. D. A legal provision for transferring property titles between family members. Answer. A. A method of exchanging similar properties to defer capital gains taxes. Explanation. A 1031 exchange, named after Section 1031 of the U.S., Internal Revenue Code, allows real estate investors in California and other states to defer paying capital gains taxes on an investment property when it is sold as long as another like-kind property is purchased with the profit gained from the sale. Question 19. Describe the difference between real property and personal property. A. Real property is immovable, while personal property is movable. B. Real property is leased, while personal property is owned. C. Real property is for commercial use, while personal property is for personal use. D. Real property is insured, 
while personal property is not? Answer A. Real property is immovable, while personal property is movable. Explanation Real property refers to land and anything permanently attached to it, like buildings or trees, making it immovable. Personal property, on the other hand, includes movable items like furniture, vehicles, or jewelry. Question 20. Explain the term cap rate and its significance in real estate investment. A. The maximum interest rate for real estate loans. B. The ratio of net operating income to property asset value. C. The limit on property price increases per year. D. The capital required for property maintenance. Answer. B. The ratio of net operating income to property asset value. Explanation. The capitalization rate, cap rate, is a key metric in real estate investment, representing the ratio of a property's net operating income to its current market value. It is used to estimate the investor's potential return on investment and helps in comparing the profitability of different properties. Question 21. What is constructive eviction? and under what circumstances might it occur? A. When a landlord physically evicts a tenant without court order. B. When a tenant voluntarily leaves due to the landlord's failure to provide habitable conditions. C. When a tenant is forced to leave due to rent increases. D. When a property is condemned by the city, forcing tenants to leave. Answer. B. When a tenant voluntarily leaves due to the landlord's failure, to provide habitable conditions. Explanation. Constructive eviction occurs when a tenant is forced to leave because the landlord has failed to provide safe, habitable living conditions, effectively breaking the lease agreement. The tenant must leave due to circumstances created by the landlord's neglect. Question 22. Define cloud on title and its potential impact on a real estate transaction. A. A claim or line that makes the title's validity questionable. B. A temporary restriction on the property title. C. A legal hold on the title until outstanding debts are paid. D. A discrepancy in the property description in the title. Answer. A. A claim or line that makes the title's validity questionable. Explanation. A cloud on title is any claim, lion, or encumbrance that might invalidate or impair the title to real property or make its legality uncertain. It can complicate the sale process and needs to be resolved before a clear title can be transferred. Question 23. Describe the role and responsibilities of a transaction broker in California real estate. A. A broker who handles the financial aspects of the transaction. B an intermediary who assists both buyer and seller without representing either. C. A broker who exclusively represents the buyer in the transaction. D. A legal advisor who provides counsel on real estate laws. Answer. B. An intermediary who assists both buyer and seller without representing either. Explanation. A transaction broker in California real estate acts as a neutral intermediary who assists both the buyer and the seller in a real estate transaction without representing either party. Their role is to facilitate the transaction rather than advocate for either side. Question 24. Explain exclusive right to sell listing agreements and how they differ from other listing types. A. A contract where only the listing broker can sell the property. B a listing agreement that allows multiple brokers to sell the property. C, a contract where the seller retains the right to sell the property themselves. D, an agreement that exclusively lists the property on certain platforms. Answer, A, a contract where only the listing broker can sell the property. Explanation, an exclusive right to sell listing agreement grants one broker the exclusive right to sell the property. Unlike other types of listings, even if the seller finds a buyer independently, the exclusive broker is still entitled to a commission. Question 25. What legal protections are afforded by the Fair Housing Act in real estate? A. Protection against fraud in mortgage lending. B. Protection against discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. C. 
protection against unfair property taxes, D, protection for first-time homebuyers against predatory lending. Answer, B, protection against discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. Explanation, the Fair Housing Act provides legal protection against discrimination in housing based on race, color, religion, sex, national origin, disability, and familial status. It prohibits such discrimination in renting, selling, or financing homes. Question 26. Scenario. A buyer discovers undisclosed water damage after purchasing a home. What recourse is available under California law? A. Filing a claim with the insurance company. B. Seeking compensation through small claims court. C. Suing the seller for non-disclosure. D. Requesting a refund from the real estate agent. Answer, C. Suing the seller for non-disclosure. Explanation. Under California law, if a buyer discovers undisclosed water damage after purchasing a home, they may have legal recourse to sue the seller for non-disclosure. Sellers are required to disclose known material defects, and failure to do so can lead to legal action. Question 27. How does the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, impact commercial real estate properties? A. It requires all commercial properties to be fully accessible to people with disabilities. B. It applies only to residential properties. C. It mandates that properties built before 1990 be retrofitted for accessibility. D. It affects only new constructions and major renovations. Answer. A. It requires all commercial properties to be fully accessible to people with disabilities. Explanation. The Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, impacts commercial real estate by requiring properties to be accessible to people with disabilities. This includes providing reasonable accommodations and ensuring accessibility in public and commercial spaces. Question 28. Define gross rent multiplier and how it is used in evaluating rental properties. A. A measure of the total rent collected over a year. B. The ratio of a property's sale price to its annual rental income. C. The total expenses subtracted from the gross rent. D. A method to calculate property taxes based on rent. Answer. B. The ratio of a property's sale price to its annual rental income. Explanation. The gross rent multiplier. GRM is a tool used in evaluating rental properties calculated by dividing the property's sale price by its annual rental income. It provides a quick way to estimate the value of an income-producing property and compare it with similar properties. Question 29. What is chain of title in real estate and why is it important? A. The sequence of historical transfers of title to a property. B. The process of transferring property between family members. C. The legal document that proves ownership of a property. D. The progression of property values over time. Answer. A. The sequence of historical transfers of title to a property. Explanation. The chain of title in real estate is the sequence of historical transfers and records of ownership of a property. It's important because it ensures clear title, showing there are no disputes or unknown claims to the property. Question 30. Explain the concept of market value and how it is determined in real estate. A. The price set by the local government for tax purposes. B. The most probable price a property should bring in a competitive market. C. The highest price a buyer is willing to pay. D. The average price of similar properties in the area. Answer. B. The most probable price a property should bring in a competitive market. Explanation. The market value in real estate is the most likely price that a property should bring in a competitive and open market, considering all conditions pertinent to the sale, such as the willingness of the buyer and seller, and assuming both parties are well informed. Question 31. Describe the process and importance of conducting a comparative market analysis, CEMA. A. A method to assess the seller's financial status. B. A process where the property is compared to similar properties in the area for pricing. C. 
a survey to determine the best marketing strategies for the property. D, a technique to evaluate the environmental impact of the property. Answer, B, a process where the property is compared to similar properties in the area for pricing. Explanation, a comparative market analysis, CEMA, is a tool used in real estate to determine the value of a property by comparing it to similar properties in the same area that have recently sold, are currently on the market, or were on the market and did not sell. This analysis helps in setting a competitive and fair price for the property. Question 32. What is escrow in a real estate transaction, and what role does it play? A. A legal process where a property is surveyed before sale. B. A financial agreement where the buyer pays the seller directly. C. A neutral third party holds funds and documents until the transaction is complete. D. A government agency that oversees real estate transactions. Answer. C. A neutral third party holds funds and documents until the transaction is complete. Explanation. In a real estate transaction, escrow refers to a neutral third party holding all funds, documents, and other pertinent items related to the transaction until all conditions of the sale are met. It ensures a smooth and secure transfer of property and funds between the buyer and seller. Question 33. Define lion and its significance in real estate transactions. A. A legal right to access another's property. B. A financial claim or encumbrance on a property as security for a debt. C. A contract between a landlord and tenant. D. A boundary dispute between neighboring properties. Answer. B. A financial claim or encumbrance on a property as security for a debt. Explanation. A lien is a legal right or interest that a creditor has in another's property, usually lasting until a debt or duty that it secures is satisfied. In real estate transactions, a lien affects the property's title, and it must be paid off or resolved before the property can be sold. Question 34. Scenario. A property in California has been identified as having an endangered species habitat on it. How does this impact the property's use and value? A. It increases the property value due to its unique ecosystem. B. It has no impact on the property's use or value. C. It limits development and changes to the property, potentially affecting its value. D. It mandates the property to be donated for conservation. Answer. C. It limits development and changes to the property, potentially affecting its value. Explanation. If a property in California is identified as having an endangered species habitat, it can impact the property's use and value by limiting development and changes that can be made to the property. This is due to environmental protection laws that aim to preserve endangered species and their habitats. Question 35. Explain the term real estate syndication and its function in property investment. A. A group of investors pooling resources to invest in real estate. B. A government program to support first-time homebuyers. C. A legal process to resolve disputes in property investment. D. A method for transferring property titles between investors. Answer. A. A group of investors pooling resources to invest in real estate. Explanation. Real estate syndication is a method in which multiple investors pool their resources to invest in real estate projects. This approach allows individuals to participate in larger real estate investments than they could on their own and share in the profits and risks. Question 36. What is the purpose of the Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, RESPA, and how does it protect consumers? A. It regulates property taxes and assessments. B. It ensures fair practices in mortgage lending and closing processes. C. It oversees the construction standards for new homes. D. It manages rent control policies in urban areas. Answer. B. It ensures fair practices in mortgage lending and closing processes. Explanation. The Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, RESPA, is a federal law that ensures fair practices in the real estate settlement process. It requires certain disclosures to be made to home buyers and sellers, 
prohibits specific practices like kickbacks, and ensures consumers are provided with detailed information about all costs associated with the mortgage process. Question 37. Describe the legal implications of a property being condemned by the government. A. The property is marked for demolition due to safety concerns. B. The property is taken by the government for public use under eminent domain. C. The property is seized due to the owner's failure to pay property taxes. D. The property is designated as a historical landmark. Answer. B. The property is taken by the government for public use under eminent domain. Explanation. When a property is condemned by the government, it is typically taken under the power of eminent domain for public use, such as building roads or schools. The property owner is usually entitled to fair compensation for the loss of their property. Question 38. Define the concept of easement and provide an example of how it might be used in real estate. A. A temporary lease agreement for property use. B. A right to use another's property for a specific purpose. C. A dispute over property boundaries. D. A restriction on property development. Answer. B. A right to use another's property for a specific purpose. Explanation. An easement is a legal right to use another's property for a specific purpose, even though they do not own it. For example, utility companies may have an easement to install and maintain utility lines, or a neighbor might have an easement to use a driveway that crosses another's property. Question 39. What are deed restrictions, and how can they affect property use? A. Limits on the sale price of a property. B. Conditions and limitations imposed on a property's use by the deed. C. Government-imposed restrictions on property development. D. Financial lines attached to a property. Answer. B. Conditions and limitations imposed on a property's use by the deed. Explanation. Deed restrictions are conditions and limitations written into a property's deed that dictate how the property can be used, what can be built on it, and how it can be altered. These restrictions can significantly affect property use and are legally enforceable. Question 40. Scenario. A tenant signs a one-year lease but needs to move out after six months due to job relocation. What are the tenant's options under California law? A. The tenant must pay rent for the entire lease term. B. The tenant can sublet the property with the landlord's approval. C. The tenant can break the lease without any consequences. D. The tenant must find a replacement tenant to assume the lease. Answer. B. The tenant can sublet the property with the landlord's approval. Explanation. Under California law, if a tenant needs to move out before the lease term ends due to job relocation, they can potentially sublet the property, subject to the landlord's approval. The tenant remains responsible for the lease terms and rent payment unless a new agreement is made. Question 41. What is a balloon payment in the context of a mortgage, and how does it affect the borrower? A. A large payment made at the start of the mortgage. B. A final lump sum payment due at the end of a mortgage term. C. A monthly payment that gradually increases over time. D. An additional fee for mortgage insurance. Answer. B. A final lump sum payment due at the end of a mortgage term. Explanation. A balloon payment in a mortgage context is a large lump sum payment due at the end of a mortgage term. It usually comes after a series of smaller monthly payments and may require refinancing or selling the property if the borrower cannot make the large payment. Question 42. Define capital gains tax and its implications when selling real estate in California. A. A tax on the increase in value of the property from purchase to sale. B. A fixed rate tax applied to all real estate transactions. C. A tax on the total sale price of the property. D. A municipal tax for property improvements. Answer. A. A tax on the increase in value of the property from purchase to sale. Explanation. Capital gains tax is a tax on the profit realized from the sale of a non-inventory asset, such as real estate, 
that has increased in value. In California, this means if you sell a property for more than you purchased it, you may owe taxes on the profit or capital gain. Question 43. Explain the process and significance of a property being rezoned in California. A. Changing the property's use from residential to commercial. B. The process of appealing property taxes. C. Renegotiating mortgage terms based on property value. D. Updating property boundaries on a title. Answer. A. Changing the property's use from residential to commercial. Explanation. Rezoning is the process of changing the designated use of a property, such as from residential to commercial or industrial. It is significant because it can drastically alter what can be built or how a property can be used, affecting its value and the community. Question 44. Scenario. A homeowner discovers a latent defect in their property after purchasing it. What legal recourse do they have against the seller in California? A. File a complaint with the local housing authority. B. Seek damages through a lawsuit for non-disclosure. C. Request a refund from the real estate agent. E. There is no legal recourse once the sale is complete. Answer. B. Seek damages through a lawsuit for non-disclosure. Explanation. In California, if a homeowner discovers a latent defect after purchase that the seller knew about and did not disclose, they can seek legal recourse against the seller. The law requires sellers to disclose known material defects, and failure to do so can lead to a lawsuit for non-disclosure. Question 45. What is the significance of disclosure in real estate transactions, and what types of information must be disclosed in California? A. Only financial details of the transaction must be disclosed. B. All known defects, hazards, and material facts about the property. C. Only information about previous owners. D. Disclosures are not legally required in California. Answer. B. All known defects, hazards, and material facts about the property. Explanation. In California real estate transactions, Disclosure is significant as sellers are legally required to disclose all known defects, hazards, and material facts about the property. This includes issues like structural defects, pest infestations, and history of property disputes. Question 46. Describe the concept of bundle of rights in property ownership. A. The various taxes and fees associated with owning property. B. The collection of legal rights afforded to a property owner. C. The responsibilities of a landlord in a rental agreement. D. The architectural and design standards for property development. Answer. B. The collection of legal rights afforded to a property owner. Explanation. The bundle of rights in property ownership refers to the set of legal rights that the owner possesses. These rights typically include the right to possess, control, enjoy, exclude others from, and dispose of the property. Question 47. What are adjustments in a real estate closing statement, and how are they calculated? A. Adjustments for property damage found during the final inspection. B. Changes to the sale price based on market conditions. C. Prorated items such as taxes and utility bills divided between buyer and seller. D. Modifications to the interest rate on the mortgage. Answer. C. Prorated items such as taxes and utility bills divided between buyer and seller. Explanation. Adjustments in a real estate closing statement refer to prorated payments for items such as property taxes, utility bills, and association fees. These are divided between the buyer and seller based on the exact period each party is responsible for these costs. Question 48. Explain the term real property and provide examples of what it includes a. Only the land and natural resources on it. B. Personal belongings and movable items in a home. C. Land, buildings, and other permanent structures or improvements. D. Mortgages and other financial instruments tied to property. Answer. C. Land, buildings, and other permanent structures or improvements. Explanation. 
Real property refers to land and anything permanently attached to it, including buildings, fences, and other structures. It also encompasses rights associated with the property, such as mineral rights or easements. Question 49. Scenario. A property in California has a disputed boundary line with its neighbor. What steps can the owner take to resolve this issue? A. Ignore the dispute as it doesn't legally affect the property. B. Seek a resolution through a community mediator. C. Initiate a boundary line adjustment process through legal channels. D. Automatically gain ownership of the disputed land over time. Answer. C. Initiate a boundary line adjustment process through legal channels. Explanation. In a disputed boundary line situation in California, the property owner can resolve the issue through legal channels, such as initiating a boundary line adjustment process, which may involve surveying and legal agreements with the neighbor. Question 50. What are the key responsibilities of a property manager in a residential rental property in California? A. Only financial management and rent collection. B. Managing tenants, property maintenance, and compliance with laws. C. Solely focused on marketing and leasing the property. D. Renovating and improving the property for resale. Answer. B. Managing tenants, property maintenance, and compliance with laws. Explanation. The key responsibilities of a property manager in a residential rental property in California include managing tenants, such as screening and handling leases, maintaining the property, and ensuring compliance with relevant laws and regulations. Question 51. Define the concept of escrow in real estate and discuss its role in a transaction. A. A legal agreement where the buyer rents the property before purchasing. B. A method for transferring property titles between parties. C. A neutral third party holds funds and documents until all conditions are met. D. A government inspection to ensure property compliance. Answer. C. A neutral third party holds funds and documents until all conditions are met. Explanation. In real estate, escrow refers to a process where a neutral third party, typically an escrow company, holds funds, documents, and other pertinent items related to the transaction until all conditions of the deal, like inspections and financing, are met. It ensures a secure and fair process for both the buyer and seller. Question 52. Explain the difference between real estate appraiser and real estate inspector in the context of a property transaction. A. An appraiser focuses on property value, while an inspector examines property condition. B. Both perform the same role, but in different transaction stages. C. An appraiser is for commercial properties, and an inspector is for residential properties. D. An inspector determines property value, and an appraiser looks for defects. Answer. A. An appraiser focuses on property value, while an inspector examines property condition. Explanation. In a property transaction, a real estate appraiser's role is to assess and provide an opinion on the property's value, often for financing purposes. In contrast, a real estate inspector's job is to examine the physical condition of the property, identifying any issues or necessary repairs. Question 53. Scenario. A couple is buying a home and discovers the seller is a licensed real estate agent who is representing themselves in the transaction. What disclosures are required in this situation in California? A. No disclosures are necessary as the seller is a licensed agent. B. Full disclosure of the seller's agent status and any potential conflicts of interest. C. Only financial disclosures about the property's value. D. Disclosure of the agent's commission rates. Answer. B. Full disclosure of the seller's agent status and any potential conflicts of interest. Explanation. In California, when a licensed real estate agent is selling their own property and representing themselves in the transaction, they are required to fully disclose their status as an agent and any potential conflicts of interest that may arise from this dual role. Question 54. Describe the process and significance of property appraisal in a real estate transaction in California. A. 
a legal requirement for all property sales in California. B, an assessment of the property's market value, typically for financing purposes. C, a review of the property's compliance with zoning laws. D, an inspection for structural defects and needed repairs. Answer, B, an assessment of the property's market value, typically for financing purposes. Explanation, a property appraisal in a real estate transaction in California involves an assessment of the property's market value, usually conducted by a licensed appraiser. This appraisal is significant, especially for financing purposes, as lenders use the appraised value to determine the loan amount. Question 55. What is a cloud on title, and how can it be resolved in a California real estate transaction? A. A dispute over property boundaries, resolved through a survey. B. A defect or uncertainty in the ownership of the property, resolved through legal action or a title company. C. A temporary line on the property, resolved by paying off debts. D. Environmental issues on the property, resolved through remediation. Answer. B. A defect or uncertainty in the ownership of the property, resolved through legal action or a title company. Explanation. A cloud on title refers to any defect, claim, or uncertainty that affects the ownership of the property such as unresolved lines or disputes over property ownership. In California, resolving a cloud on title typically involves legal action or working with a title company to clear up any issues. Question 56. Explain the implications of a property being located in a flood zone for a potential buyer in California. A. The buyer is ineligible for a mortgage. B. Mandatory flood insurance and potential impact on property value and usability. C. No special implications. It's treated like any other property. D. The property is restricted to agricultural use only. Answer. B. Mandatory flood insurance and potential impact on property value and usability. Explanation. For a property located in a flood zone in California, Potential buyers face implications, such as the requirement to purchase flood insurance if they use a federally backed mortgage. Additionally, being in a flood zone may impact the property's value, usability, and future development potential. Question 57. Define mortgage insurance and explain when and why it is required in a real estate transaction. A. Insurance covering the property's structural damages. B. Insurance protecting the lender if the borrower defaults on the loan. C. Insurance for the buyer in case of job loss. D. A one-time fee for processing the mortgage application. Answer. B. Insurance protecting the lender if the borrower defaults on the loan. Explanation. Mortgage insurance is a type of insurance policy that protects the lender in case the borrower defaults on their mortgage loan. It is typically required when the borrower makes a down payment less than 20% of the property's value, as it poses a higher risk to the lender. Question 58. What are the legal considerations for a real estate professional when dealing with a property that has been stigmatized, such as one where a crime occurred in California? A. The stigma must be disclosed, regardless of its nature. B. Only physical defects need to be disclosed, not stigmas. C. Disclosure of stigmas depends on whether they materially affect the property's value. D. Stigmas are considered public information and don't require disclosure. Answer. C. Disclosure of stigmas depends on whether they materially affect the property's value. Explanation. In California, real estate professionals must consider whether a property stigma, like a crime occurring on the property, materially affects the property's value or desirability. While not all stigmas require disclosure, significant ones that could influence a buyer's decision should be disclosed. Question 59. Scenario. A property owner wants to convert a single-family residence into a rental property. What legal and regulatory considerations should they be aware of in California? A. Local zoning laws, rental market rates, and HOA rules. B. Only the need to obtain a new property insurance policy. C. The impact on property taxes and mortgage terms. 
D. Conversion is not allowed under California law. Answer. A. Local zoning laws, rental market rates, and HOA rules. Explanation. In California, a property owner looking to convert a single-family residence into a rental property should be aware of local zoning laws, rental market rates, and any homeowners association, HOA, rules or restrictions. They also need to consider landlord-tenant laws and obtaining proper insurance for a rental property. Question 60. Describe the impact and requirements of California's Green Building Standards Code on new construction projects. A. The code only applies to government buildings. B. Mandatory energy efficiency and environmental design standards for all new constructions. C. Voluntary guidelines for environmentally friendly building practices. D. Requirements for solar panel installation on all new homes. Answer. B. Mandatory energy efficiency and environmental design standards for all new constructions. Explanation. California's Green Building Standards Code, also known as CalGreen, imposes mandatory energy efficiency and environmental design standards on all new construction projects. These requirements aim to reduce environmental impact and promote sustainable building practices. Question 61. What is the homestead exemption in California real estate, and what protection does it offer homeowners? A. Exemption from all property taxes for primary residences. B. Protection against complete loss of the home in bankruptcy or debt situations. C. A deduction on mortgage interest for tax purposes. D. Exemption from complying with local zoning regulations. Answer. B. Protection against complete loss of the home in bankruptcy or debt situations. Explanation. The homestead exemption in California real estate provides homeowners with protection against the forced sale of their home to satisfy certain types of debts, thereby safeguarding a portion of the home's equity in bankruptcy or debt collection situations. It offers a degree of financial security to homeowners. Question 62. Define exclusive agency listing and how it differs from an exclusive right to sell listing. A. Exclusive agency listing allows multiple agents to sell the property. B. The seller can find a buyer themselves without paying a commission. C. It's a temporary agreement for a specified period. D. The listing is only advertised through the agent's channels. Answer. B. The seller can find a buyer themselves without paying a commission. Explanation. In an exclusive agency listing, the property owner agrees to work with one real estate agent to sell the property, but retains the right to find a buyer themselves. If the seller finds the buyer, they are not required to pay a commission to the agent. This differs from an exclusive right to sell listing, where the agent receives a commission regardless of who finds the buyer. Question 63. Scenario. A landlord in California wants to evict a tenant for non-payment of rent. Describe the legal steps required for this process. A. The landlord can immediately change the locks and remove the tenant's belongings. B. Issuing a notice to pay rent or quit, followed by a legal eviction process if unpaid. C. Directly filing a lawsuit without any prior notice. D. Negotiating a payment plan with the tenant without legal intervention. Answer. B. Issuing a notice to pay rent or quit, followed by a legal eviction process if unpaid. Explanation. In California, if a landlord wants to evict a tenant for non-payment of rent, they must first issue a notice to pay rent or quit. If the tenant fails to pay the overdue rent within the specified time, the landlord can then proceed with a legal eviction process, which involves filing an unlawful detainer lawsuit. Question 64. What is dual agency in real estate transactions, and what are its implications in California? A. When two agents from the same brokerage represent the buyer and seller. B. It's illegal in California for one agent to represent both the buyer and seller. C. When a buyer uses two agents to find a property. D. A situation where the agent also acts as the mortgage broker. Answer. A. When two agents from the same brokerage represent the buyer and seller. Explanation. 
Dual agency in real estate transactions occurs when two agents from the same brokerage represent both the buyer and seller in the same transaction. In California, dual agency is legal but must be fully disclosed and agreed upon by both parties. It can raise concerns about conflicts of interest and the agent's ability to represent both sides fairly. Question 65. Explain the significance of earnest money in a real estate transaction. A. A penalty fee if the buyer decides to withdraw the offer. B. A security deposit held by the landlord for rentals. C. A good faith deposit showing the buyer's serious intention to purchase. D. The initial payment towards the property's down payment. Answer. C. A good faith deposit showing the buyer's serious intention to purchase. Explanation. Earnest money in a real estate transaction is a deposit made by the buyer to show their serious intention to complete the purchase. It's held in an escrow account and typically applied to the purchase price at closing. If the buyer backs out without a valid reason, they may forfeit the earnest money. Question 66. Describe the process of obtaining a certificate of occupancy for a newly constructed property in California. A. Obtaining approval from the homeowners association. B. Completing a final inspection by a city or county official to confirm code compliance. C. Registering the property with the California Real Estate Commission. D. Automatic issuance after property taxes are paid. Answer. B. Completing a final inspection by a city or county official to confirm code compliance. Explanation. To obtain a certificate of occupancy for a newly constructed property in California, the property must undergo a final inspection by a city or county official. This inspection is to confirm that the property complies with building codes, zoning laws, and other regulations. Once it passes the inspection, the certificate is issued, indicating the property is suitable for occupancy. Question 67. What are the implications of a property being in a historical district for a potential buyer in California? A. The buyer must maintain the property's historical integrity. B. No implications. It's treated like any other property. C. The property is exempt from property taxes. D. The property cannot be sold to non-residents. Answer. A. The buyer must maintain the property's historical integrity. Explanation. Buying a property in a historical district in California carries the implication that the buyer must maintain the property's historical integrity. This often means adhering to strict guidelines for renovations, repairs, and alterations to preserve the historical and architectural significance of the property and the district. Question 68. Scenario. A buyer is interested in a property with a homeowners association, HOA. What should they know about HOAs and their impact on property ownership? A. HOAs have no impact on property rights. B. HOAs impose rules and fees that affect property use and ownership. C. HOAs only govern commercial properties. D. HOAs are responsible for paying property taxes. Answer. B. Eight OAs impose rules and fees that affect property use and ownership. Explanation. When considering a property with a homeowners association, HOA, a buyer should be aware that HOAs impose certain rules, restrictions, and fees. These can affect property use, maintenance, and ownership rights. HOA rules can dictate aspects like exterior design, landscaping, and use of common areas, and failure to comply can result in fines or legal action. Question 69. To find sublease and explain its potential complexities in California real estate. A. Transferring the entire lease to a new tenant. B. Renting out a portion or all of a leased property by the original tenant to another party. C. A lease between a tenant and a property manager. D. A lease for commercial properties only. Answer. B. Renting out a portion or all of a leased property by the original tenant to another party. Explanation. A sublease in California real estate occurs when the original tenant rents out a portion or the entirety of their leased property to another party.
This arrangement can be complex as it typically requires the landlord's approval, and the original tenant remains responsible for the lease obligations, including rent and property care. Question 70. Explain the concept of property staging and its significance in the real estate selling process. A. Renovating the property before listing it for sale. B. Setting a property's sale price based on market conditions. C. Arranging furniture and decor to make the property more appealing to buyers. D. Photographing the property for online listings. Answer. C. Arranging furniture and decor to make the property more appealing to buyers. Explanation. Property staging in the real estate selling process involves strategically arranging furniture, decor, and other elements to enhance the property's appeal to potential buyers. Effective staging can highlight the property's strengths, create a welcoming atmosphere, and potentially lead to quicker sales and higher offers. Question 71. What is a lease option to buy in real estate, and what are its advantages and disadvantages? A. A lease where the tenant has no option to purchase the property. B. A rental agreement that includes an option for the tenant to buy the property at a set price. C. An agreement where the tenant must purchase the property after the lease ends. D. A commercial lease agreement for businesses only. Answer. B. A rental agreement that includes an option for the tenant to buy the property at a set price. Explanation. A lease option to buy is a rental agreement that includes an option for the tenant to buy the property at a predetermined price, during or at the end of the lease term. Advantages include the ability to test the property before buying and locked-in purchase price. Disadvantages include potential loss of option money, if not exercised, and market fluctuations. Question 72. Scenario. A property owner in California wants to install solar panels on their home. What are the potential benefits, costs, and legal considerations? A. Benefits include reduced energy costs. Costs involve installation and maintenance. Legal considerations include permits and HOA rules. B. No benefits or legal considerations. Only increased property taxes. C. Benefits only in energy production high costs with no financial incentives. D. Legal considerations prohibit solar panel installations in residential areas. Answer. A. Benefits include reduced energy costs. Costs involve installation and maintenance. Legal considerations include permits and HOA rules. Explanation. For a California homeowner wanting to install solar panels, benefits include reduced energy costs and potential tax incentives. Costs involve initial installation and ongoing maintenance. Legal considerations include obtaining necessary permits and compliance with Homeowners Association, HOA, rules or local ordinances regarding solar panel installations. Question 73. Describe the process and importance of lead-based paint disclosure in California real estate transactions. A. Optional disclosure for properties built before 1978. B. Mandatory for all properties, regardless of construction date. C. Required only for commercial properties. D. Mandatory disclosure for properties built before 1978 to inform potential health risks. Answer. D. Mandatory disclosure for properties built before 1978 to inform potential health risks. Explanation. In California real estate transactions, lead-based paint disclosure is a mandatory process for properties built before 1978. Sellers must inform buyers about the presence of lead-based paint, which poses potential health risks, especially to children. This disclosure helps buyers make informed decisions and plan for potential remediation. Question 74. What are special assessment taxes, and when are they typically levied on property owners in California? A. Taxes for general state revenue, levied annually. B. Additional taxes for specific local improvements, like infrastructure projects. C. Federal taxes for environmental conservation. D. One-time taxes at the point of sale. Answer. B. Additional taxes for specific local improvements, like infrastructure projects. Explanation. 
Special assessment taxes in California are additional taxes levied on property owners for specific local improvements or projects, such as infrastructure upgrades, street repairs, or public utilities. These taxes are typically assigned to properties that directly benefit from the improvement, and the amount is based on the property's assessed value or the improvement's impact. Question 75. Define constructive eviction and give an example of a situation that might lead to it in California. A. When a landlord evicts a tenant without proper legal procedure. B. When a tenant leaves due to the property becoming uninhabitable. C. A legal eviction process initiated by a property owner. D. Eviction due to redevelopment plans. Answer. B. When a tenant leaves due to the property becoming uninhabitable. Explanation. Constructive eviction occurs when a tenant is forced to leave a rental property because it has become uninhabitable or unsafe, often due to the landlord's neglect or failure to make necessary repairs. An example is if a landlord doesn't address severe water damage, leading to hazardous mold growth, making the property unfit for living. Question 76. Scenario. A commercial property owner is facing foreclosure. Explain the foreclosure process and the owner's options in California. A. Immediate eviction and property seizure by the lender. B. A legal process involving notice of default, opportunity to cure, and potential public auction. C. Foreclosure is not applicable to commercial properties. D. Direct sale of the property to the government. Answer. B. A legal process involving notice of default, opportunity to cure, and potential public auction. Explanation. In California, the foreclosure process for a commercial property owner begins with a notice of default from the lender. The owner then has a period to cure the default, usually by paying the overdue amount. If not resolved, the property may be sold at a public auction. The owner may explore options like loan modification, short sale, or bankruptcy to avoid foreclosure. Question 77. What are the benefits and drawbacks of buying a property at a real estate auction in California? A. Benefits include lower prices. Drawbacks include potential for unseen damages. B. Only benefits, no drawbacks. C. Illegal in California. D. Drawbacks include higher prices, no benefits. Answer. A. Benefits include lower prices. Drawbacks include potential for unseen damages. Explanation. Buying a property at a real estate auction in California can offer benefits like potentially lower prices and quicker transactions. However, drawbacks include the risk of buying a property as is, often without a thorough inspection, leading to potential unseen damages or issues that the buyer will have to address. Question 78. Explain property staging and its significance in the real estate selling process in California. A. Mandatory renovation required by California law. B. Preparing and furnishing a property to enhance its appeal to potential buyers. C. Only applicable for high-end properties. D. A legal requirement for disclosing property defects. Answer. B. Preparing and furnishing a property to enhance its appeal to potential buyers. Explanation. Property staging in California involves preparing and furnishing a property in a way that enhances its appeal to potential buyers. It can involve decluttering, rearranging furniture, and adding decorative elements to make the property more attractive. Staging can help a property sell faster and for a higher price by showcasing its best features and helping buyers visualize living there Question 79. Describe the responsibilities of a property manager in a residential rental property in California. A. Solely responsible for collecting rent. B. Managing daily operations, maintaining the property and tenant relations. C. Only handling property sales and purchases. D. Focusing exclusively on marketing and advertising. Answer. B. Managing daily operations, maintaining the property, and tenant relations. Explanation. A property manager for a residential rental property in California has a range of responsibilities, including managing daily operations, maintaining the property, handling repairs, 
collecting rent, addressing tenant complaints, and ensuring compliance with landlord-tenant laws. They also play a key role in tenant relations, from screening potential renters to addressing lease violations. Question 80. What are adjustments in a real estate closing statement, and how are they calculated in California? A. Random fees added by the real estate agent. B. Prorated amounts for items prepaid or owed at the time of closing. C. Fixed charges based on property size. D. Adjustments are not used in California real estate transactions. Answer. B. Prorated amounts for items prepaid or owed at the time of closing. Explanation. Adjustments on a real estate closing statement in California refer to prorated amounts for items that have been prepaid or are still owed at the time of closing. This can include prorated property taxes, homeowner association dues, utility bills, and interest. These adjustments ensure that the buyer and seller only pay their respective shares of these costs up to and from the closing date. Question 81. What is the role of a title company in a California real estate transaction? A. To provide property insurance only. B. To negotiate the sale price. C. To ensure the property title is legitimate and facilitate the closing process. D. To manage the property after the sale. Answer. C. To ensure the property title is legitimate and facilitate the closing process. Explanation. In California real estate transactions, a title company plays a crucial role in ensuring that the property title is legitimate and clear of any lines or encumbrances. They conduct a title search, provide title insurance to protect against future claims, and often facilitate the closing process, handling the paperwork, and the exchange of funds. Question 82. Explain the concept of Housing Affordability Index in California real estate. A. A measure of the average resident's ability to purchase an average-priced home. B. An index indicating the number of luxury homes available. C. A government-mandated price ceiling on housing. D. A measure of rental property affordability. Answer. A. A measure of the average resident's ability to purchase an average-priced home. Explanation. The Housing Affordability Index in California real estate is a measure used to gauge the average resident's ability to buy an average-priced home in a specific area. It considers factors like median household income, median home price, and prevailing mortgage rates. A higher index indicates greater affordability. Question 83. Scenario. A California property is found to be in violation of local building codes. What are the implications for the seller? A. The property cannot be sold until it complies with the codes. B. No implications, the buyer is responsible for compliance. C. The property is automatically condemned. D. The seller must pay a fine, but the sale can proceed. Answer. A. The property cannot be sold until it complies with the codes. Explanation. In California, if a property is found to be in violation of local building codes, it cannot be sold until the issues are addressed and the property is brought into compliance. The seller is responsible for ensuring that the property meets all applicable codes and regulations before the sale can proceed. Question 84. Define sale leaseback in commercial real estate and its typical use in California. A. Selling a property and then leasing it back from the new owner. B. A lease agreement that automatically converts to a sale. C. Leasing a property with an option to buy. D. A temporary lease before a property is sold. Answer. A. Selling a property and then leasing it back from the new owner. Explanation. A sale leaseback is a transaction in commercial real estate where the owner sells the property and then leases it back from the new owner. This arrangement is often used in California as a financing strategy, allowing the original owner to free up capital while continuing to use the property for their business operations. Question 85. What is the impact of California's Proposition 5 on property tax transfer for senior citizens? A. Allow senior citizens to transfer their low property tax base to a new home. B. Increases property taxes for senior citizens. C. Prohibits senior citizens from transferring property. 
D has no impact on property taxes for senior citizens. Answer A. Allows senior citizens to transfer their low property tax base to a new home. Explanation. California's Proposition 5, also known as the Property Tax Transfer Initiative, allows senior citizens, age 55 and older, to transfer their low property tax base to a new home of equal or lesser value. This can provide significant tax savings, especially for those living in homes with long-standing low tax bases due to Proposition 13. Question 86. Discuss the role of a probate sale in California real estate transactions. A. Sale of property by a bank. B. Sale of a property that is part of an estate of a deceased person. C. An illegal sale of property. D a private sale without a real estate agent? Answer. B. Sale of a property that is part of an estate of a deceased person. Explanation. A probate sale in California real estate occurs when a property is sold as part of the estate of a deceased person. This type of sale is typically overseen by the probate court, and it may involve specific legal procedures and potential court approval, especially if the estate is subject to probate proceedings. Question 87. Explain the concept of green building and its relevance in California real estate. A. Building with only recycled materials. B. Construction and operation of buildings in an environmentally sustainable way. C. Buildings painted green to promote environmental awareness. D buildings used exclusively for agricultural purposes? Answer B. Construction and operation of buildings in an environmentally sustainable way. Explanation. Green building in California real estate refers to the practice of constructing and operating buildings in an environmentally sustainable manner. This includes using energy-efficient materials, reducing waste, conserving water, and minimizing the impact on the environment. In California, Green building practices are increasingly relevant due to environmental concerns and state regulations promoting sustainability. Question 88. What are the legal requirements for disclosing death on a property in California? A. Mandatory disclosure of any death within the past three years. B. No requirement to disclose deaths on a property. C. Only required for deaths due to violent crimes. D. Disclosure required only if asked by the buyer. Answer. A. Mandatory disclosure of any death within the past three years. Explanation. In California, the law requires sellers to disclose if a death has occurred on the property within the past three years. This requirement is part of the broader obligation to disclose material facts that could affect the property's value or desirability. The disclosure should include the fact of the death and, if known, the cause. Question 89. Describe the California law on mandatory earthquake insurance disclosures for properties. A. Earthquake insurance is mandatory for all properties. B. Sellers must inform buyers if the property is in an earthquake hazard area. C. No specific disclosure laws regarding earthquake insurance. D. Disclosure only required for properties built before 1980. Answer. B. Sellers must inform buyers if the property is in an earthquake hazard area. Explanation. California law requires sellers to disclose to potential buyers if the property is located in a designated earthquake hazard area. This disclosure is part of the Natural Hazard Disclosure Statement, informing buyers of potential risks. However, the law does not mandate the purchase of earthquake insurance. Question 90. Explain the California Coastal Commission's role in real estate development near the coastline. A. No involvement in coastal real estate development. B. Responsible for beach cleanups only. C. Regulates development to protect coastal resources and public access. D. Only advises on property prices. Answer. C. Regulates development to protect coastal resources and public access. Explanation. The California Coastal Commission plays a significant role in real estate development near the state's coastline. The Commission regulates development in the coastal zone to ensure protection of coastal resources, 
public access to the coast, and environmental sustainability. Developers must often obtain permits from the Commission for Coastal Projects. Question 91. What is the Mills Act in California, and how does it affect property owners? A. A tax incentive program for owners of historic properties. B. An act regulating the sale of commercial mills. C. A law requiring solar panels on all new properties. D. Legislation controlling rent increases in California. Answer. A. A tax incentive program for owners of historic properties. Explanation. The Mills Act in California provides a significant property tax relief for owners of historic properties. In exchange for preserving and maintaining their historic property, owners can receive a reduced property tax bill. This act encourages the restoration and preservation of historic buildings throughout California. Question 92. Define transfer tax in California real estate transactions. A. A tax on transferring utilities to the new owner. B. A fee for transferring the title of a property from one owner to another. C. A tax on transferring furniture included in a property sale. D. There is no transfer tax in California. Answer. B. A fee for transferring the title of a property from one owner to another. Explanation. Transfer tax in California real estate transactions is a fee imposed by local governments for transferring the title of a property from one owner to another. The tax amount can vary depending on the city or county where the property is located, and it is typically based on the sale price or a flat fee. Question 93. How do Prop 60 and Prop 90 benefit senior homeowners in California? A. Allow transfer of low property tax base to a new home within or between counties. B. Provide free home maintenance services. C. Mandate lower selling prices for seniors. D. Offer tax credits for downsizing homes. Answer. A. Allow transfer of low property tax base to a new home within or between counties. Explanation. Propositions 60 and 90 in California allow senior homeowners, age 55 and older, to transfer their low property tax base to a new home. Prop 60 applies to transfers within the same county, while Prop 90 extends this benefit to certain other counties. This can provide significant tax savings, especially for seniors moving to homes of equal or lesser value. Question 94. What is the significance of zoning variances in California real estate development? A. Variances are irrelevant in California. B. Permission to deviate from specific zoning regulations for a property. C. Automatic approval of any construction project. D. A ban on all commercial development. Answer. B. Permission to deviate from specific zoning regulations for a property. Explanation. Zoning variances in California real estate development are permissions granted by local zoning authorities to deviate from the standard zoning regulations for a specific property. Property owners or developers might request a variance to allow for a use or structure that doesn't strictly comply with the zoning code, such as building height or setback requirements. Question 95. Scenario. A real estate agent in California is found guilty of secret profit. What does this mean, and what are the consequences? A. Making unauthorized renovations to increase property value. B. Profiting from undisclosed information or actions in a transaction. C. Secretly reducing the sale price. D. Selling a property without a license. Answer. B. Profiting from undisclosed information or actions in a transaction. Explanation. In California real estate, secret profit refers to a situation where a real estate agent profits from undisclosed information or actions related to a transaction without the knowledge or consent of their client. This is a breach of the agent's fiduciary duty and can lead to legal consequences, including loss of license, fines, and potential lawsuits. Question 96. Explain the concept of rent control in California and its impact on landlords and tenants. A. Limits the amount landlords can charge for rent and rent increases. B. A policy that allows unlimited rent increases. C. Mandatory rental subsidies provided by the state. D. 
only applies to commercial properties? Answer A. Limits the amount landlords can charge for rent and rent increases. Explanation. Rent control in California is a policy that limits the amount landlords can charge for rent and governs how much and how often they can increase rent. The aim is to provide more stable and affordable housing options for tenants. However, it also impacts landlords by restricting their ability to freely set rental rates, potentially affecting their rental income. Question 97. Explain the Subdivision Map Act in California and its significance in real estate development. A governs the division of land into smaller lots or parcels. B, a map displaying all real estate properties in California. C, an act that prohibits subdivision of land. D, only applies to commercial real estate developments. Answer, A, governs the division of land into smaller lots or parcels. Explanation. The Subdivision Map Act in California is a set of regulations that governs the subdivision of land into smaller lots or parcels for sale, lease, or financing. It is significant in real estate development as it sets forth the requirements for creating subdivisions, including the preparation and approval of maps and adherence to local planning and zoning regulations. Question 98. What are TIC agreements, tenancy in common, and their role in California real estate? A. Agreements for shared ownership of a property by multiple parties. B. Contracts for temporary tenancy in commercial properties. C. Exclusive agreements for real estate agents. D. Agreements for vacation rentals. Answer. A. Agreements for shared ownership of a property by multiple parties. Explanation. Tenancy in common, TIC. Agreements in California real estate involve shared ownership of a property by multiple parties. Each owner has an undivided interest in the property and can own different percentages. TIC agreements are important for outlining the rights and responsibilities of each co-owner, including how expenses and profits are divided and what happens if one party wants to sell their share. Question 99. Describe the legal requirements for smoke detector installation in California properties. A. Optional for all properties. B. Mandatory for all residential properties. C. Required only in commercial buildings. D. Only required in new construction. Answer. B. Mandatory for all residential properties. Explanation. In California, it is legally required to have smoke detectors installed in all residential properties. This includes single-family homes, apartments, condos, and other types of dwellings. The law specifies where smoke detectors should be placed, such as in each bedroom, outside sleeping areas, and on each level of the home, to ensure safety and compliance with fire safety regulations. Question 100. What is a purchase money mortgage, and how does it work in California real estate transactions? A. A mortgage provided by a government agency. B. A loan taken to finance the purchase of a property. C. A mortgage for purchasing commercial properties only. D. A special mortgage for first-time homebuyers. Answer. B. A loan taken to finance the purchase of a property. Explanation. A purchase money mortgage in California real estate is a loan taken out by the buyer to finance the purchase of a property. This type of mortgage is typically obtained from a bank or other financial institution, though sometimes it can be a seller-financed loan where the seller acts as the lender. It is secured by the property being purchased, and failure to repay the loan can lead to foreclosure. 